The rapid expansion of our global economy is fueled, in part, by free trade. Many American corporations seize the opportunity to reduce costs by outsourcing manufacturing to lower-wage countries. But for many American workers, the prospect of opportunity is slipping away, as millions of jobs are sent abroad. We were pretty much marched out of the plant. We had heard through video and seen in our cafeterias that the jobs were being sent to Salinas, Mexico. Me and about almost 300 others. A couple of years ago, Mondelez Nabisco uh, decided that they would invest $130 million in four new ovens that would either be placed in Salinas, Mexico, where employees make poverty wages, or a Chicago bakery. But in order to put it in a Chicago bakery and still lose 225 jobs, the employees would have to give up 60% of their pay and benefits. And I don't know who could live off 60% reduction in pay and benefits. The burden of massive layoffs affects more than those who are left unemployed. It has a daunting impact on their families and their communities. The gloom that came once the announcement was reality for us that we were actually going to get laid off and the process has started, you know, it was just devastating for many of us, especially me being a 59-year-old man, where would I replace the, my family? It brought despair in my life because I have a daughter in college, I'm a homeowner, and we are a one-income family. The loss of these living wage jobs from the South Side community shrinks the tax base, and the tax base should be increasing to support public service. NAFTA was a trade agreement that promised us 200,000 brand new manufacturing jobs, but not one job was delivered. Instead, 80,000 manufacturing plants were closed and jobs were exported to other countries. And because of that, our tax base has been eroded. And when the tax base is eroded, we cannot properly fund our educational systems, our public schools, our fire departments, our police departments, and essential services. As American communities struggle with job loss, the newly hired workers abroad have their own issues. Countries where these jobs are exported have very lax regulations that protect the workers and the environment of that country. For example, the workers in the Mondelez plant in Salinas, it's been reported that they make $1 an hour and they work 12-hour days. And that's not enough of a wage to sustain those people. Despite these concerns and countless protests, companies continue to outsource jobs. While the immediate goal may be bigger quarterly profits, there is no guarantee that this is a viable strategy for the long term. The United States comprises 5% of the entire world's population, but we consume 20 to 25% of all products made in the entire world. The business model devised by Mondelez and other corporations is not sustainable because it's a model based on consumption only. If Americans are going to continue to consume products, we also need the jobs or we will no longer be able to purchase products. Here's a company that nets over $2 billion a year and then takes the profits off the backs of the workers in Chicago and builds a plant in Mexico. And then the insult of it is, is that they make it somewhere else and then they turn around and sell it to us for the same price that they were making it for here in our plant. Products made in Mexico under lax regulatory standards by workers who make poverty wages are sold in America at the same price. The only one that benefits are CEOs like Irene Rosenfeld and executives whose pay is skyrocketing. You can help us by buying American goods and not buying the products made in Mexico. Check the label, and if it's made in Mexico, tell your grocery manager not to put those on the shelf. This is how we feel that we can uh, beat this business model. We beat them as consumers at the cash register. The BCTGM International Union is supporting bakery workers in their fight to stop Nabisco from eliminating thousands of American jobs and moving them to low-wage countries like Mexico, India, and Bahrain. Here's a company that was given funding by the city of Chicago, $90 million. Then this company took $450 million and built a plant in Mexico. And they told us that it was because they didn't want to make the investment in our plant. They didn't want to spend $130 million. But yet they wanted to turn around and bring the product back and sell it to us in the communities that they're destroying. As everyone knows, we have the 1% and the 99%. And as we sit here today, there are eight people in the world, many of those eight people are Americans, that have more wealth than 50% of the world's entire population. 
And Mondelez is a company that exacerbates that problem. In the last seven years, the CEO has received $144 million in compensation, has a $35 million pension, and if anything goes wrong, has a $50 million golden parachute. Mondelez Nabisco has billboards, they have television commercials, telling how wonder-filled their product is, but at the same time, they're decimating communities across this nation. When Mondelez Nabisco laid off 600 workers in South Chicago and moved their jobs to Mexico, it inspired a campaign to boycott Mexican-made Nabisco products. Join the Nabisco 600 and take a stand against outsourcing. Help save American jobs by buying American. Don't buy Nabisco products like Oreos, Ritz, and animal crackers made in Mexico. When you go to your grocery store, check the label. And if it's made in Mexico, give it to your grocery manager and tell them don't put it on the shelves. Please visit fightforamericanjobs.org to learn more about how you can help American workers.